Hello, Longhorns. My name is Yulissa Chavez, and today we're going to be talking about certifications, minors, and double majoring. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started as soon as I share my screen. All right. So for those of us that are new to UT, you may not know that there are many options for you to essentially customize your degree and make yourself more competitive for when you go out and look for a job. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So first, we're going to talk about what, my, what a minor is. Then we're going to discuss certifications and how to double major. First, we should discuss what is a minor. A minor is attached to degree. And for sake of clarification, a minor is not a degree. Students pursuing an integrated undergrad slash graduate program must complete that requirement requirements for the minor within one year. Transcript recognized undergraduate academic minors must be completed in conjunction when, uh, with an undergraduate degree at the University of Texas at Austin. So if you are planning to um, have a transcript recognized minor, you should be doing your undergrad, aka your bachelor's here at UT Austin. To declare a minor, there are steps here. You do have to apply and the application uh, for that is online here. And usually you should discuss this with your academic advisor of your major. You should next step be approved. Uh, most minors are auto-approved, but they are open to all students and show the approval as immediate. Some minors are restricted, however, and must be reviewed by the offering department. Restricted minors may require a minimum GPA or an additional application. So, so just to clarify, uh, some minors are going to be automatically approved. Others, you may have to do more additional steps. Step three is to pursue. You want to meet with your major advisor to have the approved minor added to your profile and complete the process. So essentially what this means is you wanna stay on course um, to graduate on time with this additional minor. And all three, all three of these steps, apply, approve, and pursue can be completed by your major advisor. Now on to certifications. Transcript recognized certificate programs offer interdisciplinary curricula that support and extend a student's major or curricula in a specific academic or technical field. So when you think of certification, you should think of a skill or something very specific that is required in a workforce. Undergraduates who complete certificate requirements in conjunction with their degree requirements or within one year after earning the degree receive recognition on the university transcript. Intergrad, undergraduate, graduate programs must complete certificate requirements within one year after they complete their undergraduate degree requirements. Certificate programs also require minimum of 18 hours of coursework, but may not require more than 24 hours. A maximum of nine hours of certificate coursework may be taken after the student has earned the undergraduate degree. At least half of the required certificate coursework must, must be completed in residence at the university. And I wanna go ahead and clarify what is the main difference between a minor and a certification. So a minor is more of an academic credential, whereas a certificate is proof of a foundation that proves you have a certain skill. So when we're discussing the differences, and if you have to choose between the two, these are some important things to keep in mind. A minor is considered to be more marketable and more prestigious. You do get more job opportunities, uh, but again, a minor does require more time to obtain. A minor indicates that you are academically prepared, accredited by the university. Meanwhile, a certification is proof that you have a specific skill, but it is generally less prestigious. It's quicker to obtain, 
and you do require, at least in UT Austin, a minimum of 18 hours of certificate coursework, uh, but may not require more than 24 hours. So here are a couple of certificates that are offered um, here in UT Austin. As you can see here, it's a good list. And here is a link to find more information about minors and certificates. And I will be linking the information and the websites that we're exploring today uh, in the description below. But just so you guys can see here, there are many, many minors to choose from. And as you can see, they are divided and separated within each college. And as far as the transcript recognized certificate programs go, we also have these here. We're gonna go into more details about specific certificate programs and what they have to offer in a bit. So let's discuss the benefits. Why would a person want a minor or a certificate uh, or even a maybe double major? It, goes back to allowing yourself to customize your degree. You can have a basic foundation and a skill and your interests all in one. It makes you more competitive out in the quote unquote real world when you're applying for a job. And you have proof that you have varying interests and knowledge. This could also potentially increase your salary and allow you to specialize in certain position opportunities. One specific certificate program that I want to point out that I participated while I was an undergrad at UT Austin is the Bridging Disciplines Program. Um, they, they allow undergraduates to develop a secondary area of specialization that complements their major. To earn a BDP certificate, you must complete 19 credit hours combining inter interdisciplinary coursework with hands-on research internship or creative experiences. So while I was a undergraduate here, I did pursue the certificate for public policy here. And basically what Bridging Disciplines does is they have a list for you of the classes you should take and other additional requirements to earn the certification. So as you can see here, um, with Bridging Disciplines Program, AKA BDP, you do do foundational courses, uh, courses within a strand, and what's called a connecting experience, uh, which says here is a meaningful research or internship experience related to, in this case, public policy. For a BDP program, you do have to have, have ready and written an integration essay by the end. So um, that's just one example of a specific certification you could get through BDP. There are a lot more, however, and I encourage anybody who has a vague interest in any of these areas to go ahead and pursue this certification, um, even if it's a little different from your major. And I would also advise to schedule a meeting with a faculty member of the BDP office that should be located in a Flan Academic Center. I wanna go ahead and show you guys also how you apply. So it is an online process. Um, but before you apply, you should see your requirements here. And it seems like you are required to go into an information session. If I remember correctly, I believe I applied uh, within my sophomore year in the spring. So if that is you, it is not too late. And 
Again, I will link this below in the description, but I just want you guys to see that this is uh, where you go for information. Again, what you're gonna do is you should look at the requirements. Um, you should attend an info session and you should be able to apply online by clicking this link here. I wanna see if it is live right now. Okay, maybe not, that's a long process. All right, you teach is an additional certification program. Again, a certifications focus on a specific skill, in this case, teaching. Um, each college has a you teach branch. Uh, I just happened to, uh, when I was an undergrad being government, AKA the College of Liberal Arts, which is why I am more familiar with you teach liberal arts. But again, I want to reiterate that each college does have a you teach branch. Um, and they are a professional secondary teacher preparation program here in UT Austin um, for students that are planning on doing, on teaching either English 7 through 12, languages other than English, and this would be um, early childhood to 12th grade or social studies from 7th to 12th grade. I also went through the UTeach program during my undergrad and I pursued uh, social studies 7 through 12. And I, here is the website to explore and get some more information about, uh, in this case, you teach liberal arts. As you can see here, there are info sessions available and you can apply here. There is a deadline to be aware of if you are interested in this. And I do want to mention that specifically what you teach, you also have to take certain classes to earn that credential, that certification. And I'm not gonna go too into detail about this specific section, but each college does have their own, again, minor and certification program. So let's say for example, I'm interested in maybe minor uh, in a become school of business. I found a link here that shows you what minors are offered. So you can have a business minor and here are the steps to do so. And here are the required and expected coursework you take. So as you can see, it's all listed here. But again, I want to remind you guys that you should not be doing these steps and planning. If, if you are planning to minor in something, you should definitely let your academic advisor know. I do also want to mention that some colleges do restrict uh, who is allowed to minor with them. For example, I believe the Cockrell School of Engineering is a bit more restrictive for claiming minors. Um, so as you can see here, to be admitted into their minor program for material science and engineering, you must have these requirements. Specifically, students must have completed Mathematics 808, sorry, 408C, Mathematics 408D, and so on and so forth. As you can see here, these are more math-based and science-based uh, classes. So if you are a person who is not within the science or the math field, uh, you may not have these requirements. So I want that to be noted that some college colleges and their minors may be a little more restrictive and may have more requirements than others. And again, I will be attaching the links to all of these colleges um, below in the description. Now, what I wanna talk about is double majoring or what that even is. If you discover that you have an interest in several fields, you may want to simultaneously major um, in order to seek two degrees 
or maybe one degree with two specialties. We're gonna go over what that means in a few minutes. You must be accepted to both programs and complete all of the degree requirements for both majors. To apply for a second major in another college, you must first complete 30 hours of coursework and residence at the university. So I wanna go ahead and reiterate that. If you are planning to add a major, you have to have done 30 hours, presumably at the University of Texas at Austin. So what I wanna discuss next is the comment I was making about the difference between um, having two degrees versus two, I'm sorry, having two degrees versus having one degree with two specialties. And that's this is what I'm referring to, double majoring versus dual degree. A double major results in one degree with two areas of specialization. So for example, a person can have a dual major, can be a dual major in both government and economics. Government and economics at the University of Texas are, at Austin are majors that are located in the College of Liberal Arts. So when a person graduates from there, they will only have a Bachelor of Arts, okay? A dual degree program lets you earn two credentials in distinct fields. So for example, let's say that I have a ma I am majoring in government, um, AKA the College of Liberal Arts. And I'm also majoring in political communication, which is a major that is offered by the Moody College of Communications. When I graduate, if I stick with these majors, government and political communications, I will have both a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science in Communication Studies. So again, it's very important to point out what the difference is between a double major in a dual degree. A double major is one single degree with two areas of specialization, while a dual degree program are two separate degrees. What I do wanna point out also is that UT Austin's um, degree, like the physical degree, will not have your major listed. So again, I wanna say that one more time first, Jens. Your major will not be printed on your degree. And here is a suggested timeline for if you want to go into a certification at a major or uh, at a minor. You want to apply by the end of your first year if possible. Certain majors slash minors only let you apply either in the fall or in the spring. Uh, there are some that allow both. Some have open enrollment, which, which means you can switch into at any time. And as mentioned earlier, certain majors are more restrictive. Some even require an essay. And we suggest the University Writing Center to help you with this because they offer specific help through this in workshops. Some departments also require you to attend information sessions. Uh, and you can usually find this and verify this on, a, on their website. I've also had students ask me, well, how much longer will it take me to add a minor or um, add a certification? And you can actually find this out by using the interactive degree audit. So again, the interactive degree audit is utilized to see if you're on track to graduate on time or to figure out how much more time or work do you need to do. So what you do here is you select your certification, your major and your minor. And I just wanna, again, remind you guys, it is very important that you let your academic advisor know that you're thinking of doing this and wanting to pursue, again, a potential minor certification or major. While minimum course is required, almost every course is a prerequisite for the next course in a sequence. So what that means is that you're going to start in a entry level class and then an intermediate and then an advanced. So keep that in mind. If you are planning to do a certification or adding on a major or a minor. And this is where you would find the interactive degree audit. And you're able to run your degree audit here. 
Now, unfortunately, because I am a graduate student, I tried this um, a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't able to run a degree audit because graduate students um, usually don't have minors uh, or certifications. So I just wanna point out that there is a video on how you can run your interactive degree audit. And again, an interactive degree audit is to just see uh, how long your timeline would be and to see if you are on track to graduate if you were to add a minor or add a certification or add a major. It is by no means permanent. Um, so again, what you would do is you go to minor certificate inventory and just to remind you guys, I am a graduate student, so I don't think it will let me do this, but let's say I wanna go into a specific minor. Let's say I want to do, 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 do sports and media. So it says apply here. You're not actually applying for that. What that means is that you're adding this to the degree audit. Um, there, are, there are students that panic about what this is. Again, this is not actually applying for this specific uh, minor. It's simply adding on to your request. So I'll try it, but I don't think it works. Yeah, there it is. So again, what you want to do is you want to go into minor certificate inventory. Then you would go into audit requests and then audit results. And again, there is a handy dandy video here that you can watch on your own time for that. I always recommend a good degree audit. And really that is it for today. Um, again, I strongly encourage anybody who is thinking of maybe doing two fields or maybe is unsure about their current major to add on a certification, a minor, maybe another major to make yourself more competitive and have a better chance of making it out there in the field, in the real world. Um, because again, it doesn't hurt to have more than one interest and proof that you have more than one interest or um, background knowledge. So with that, I'll leave you guys alone. Have a good day and hook em.